Coast to today. Plenty of sunshine. Shetland stays fairly cloudy, but uh, Orkney should brighten up tomorrow and uh, temperatures will rise nicely as we head through the afternoon into the low 20s for many. 17 for Orkney, cooler 14 for Shetland. Then on Tuesday, it's dry, it's sunny, high clouds filling in. With a glowing forecast, I was keen to make the most of it and I decided to head on a, a trip up the mountains and I was actually on a family holiday so I got up super early with the alarm set just before 4am and after a bit of porridge and what have you, I was on the road by 4.30 heading along this lovely, wonderful road and around every bend there's a photo and I did well to get there within the hour because I was stopping <laughs> Quite a lot to snap away at these lovely mountains. Anyway, after a bit of time, I pulled up at the start of the walk, which is located at a lovely bay with a caravan site, and the mountains were filling the windscreen. Well, I don't know if you can see behind me. Beautiful beach. It's a nice still morning. In fact, the midges are starting to congregate <laughs> because I've stopped. And I'm on another Scottish island, and if you remember, the last time I was on a Scottish island, I was up in Shetland and I hiked up the highest hill there called the Ronis Hill Now I'm doing the same today, I'm hiking up the highest mountain on this island but I think the peak's a slightly different different feel to Ronis Hill, shall we say and you'll find out in a minute, I'm going to get up here and I'll do another piece of camera and you can see where I am but it's, it's a nice morning, there's no wind and it's a bit cloudy, it's perfect walk, walking conditions actually I think if the sun had been out it might have been a bit too warm, but it's absolutely beautiful. And if you can see what I can see over there, which I'll show you at the next bit, yeah, you'd be excited as well. So, without further ado, let's get up here and show you the view. There's a well-constructed path that takes you up from the car park towards the foot of the mountains, and it goes through some lovely, sort of grassy, vegetated landscapes which well if i've been honest with you aren't quite characteristic of this uh, of this area and to the mountains i was going to but i was jo enjoying it nonetheless look at that view over there absolutely beautiful and i've come up the path a little bit more and i said i'd do the big reveal so here we go you'll, you'll be able to tell straight away where i want to spin the camera around in a minute but it's just magnificent this is one of my favorite places in uh, in scotland well not just in Scotland, in the uh, whole wide world. And I'll spin you around, you can see where I'm going. Let's have a look. <laughs> you might not be able to make it out, but there we go. That's the black cooling of sky. So I'm on the Isle of Sky, And I'm heading up there, over my shoulder there, to the highest point, which is Skur, Skur Alistair. And it's just lovely. As I said, it's not blue skies like it was forecast, but I'm almost kind of glad of that, because the walking conditions are fine. There's a wee breeze. So the midges that were attacking me down at the car are now, uh, yeah, they're now hunkered down staying out of that breeze, so. Yeah, I'm going to head up here into Coyer Lagan and then uh, I'll do a wee bit more up there and tell you about the route and where I'm going. Possibly two Munros today, we'll see. But happy, happy Murray. <laughs> Big smile. So I think it's going to be smiles all round today, right. Enough waffling, let's get cracked on up this hill. Well, that's me arrived in Coir Lagan, what a place. Look at this, and you can see my route behind me, that's the Great Stone Chute, which I'll be going up, which is going to be a bit of a nightmare, I think it's... Uh, I've not been up that way before, but I've been told it's two steps forwards and <laughs> one step back going up there. It's a steep ascent, that's going to take me right to just about the top of Skur Alster, which is the highest point in the sky at 992, so <clears throat> there's a couple of people camping here, so I'm going to get cracked on past there and start heading up the route. Well, I hope you can hear this. I can confirm it's definitely two steps forward and one step back on these uh, the great stone shoot here where I am at the moment. What a wonderful place it is. <laughs> Although this is slow progress and the rocks are all moving back. I'm going to have a couple so you can see me. And you can see I put my helmet on. Oh. You can probably guess why I put my helmet on. There's nobody above me, but even so, 
all this rock's come from somewhere and although the likelihood of a rock fall or a stray rock hitting me is uh, the chances are, are low, the consequences of something happening are, are high so I've got a helmet so why not wear it? <laughs> so I'm heading up here with my helmet on but the sun's just starting to come out I'm just wondering if this cloud's going to burn off yeah you can probably see it behind me down uh, down in the towards uh, Glen Brittle uh, the sun is now shining so hopefully when I get to the top of this uh, stone chute I'll get some views but that might be some time yet because it's taking me forever right let's crack on a bit further After a considerable amount of time and effort, I was making slow, slow progress up the, the great stone chute. And I must admit, it was it was taxing and uh, a few expletives left my mouth. Well, I think two words to describe the great stone chute would be perseverance and patience. <laughs> it's tough. It's frustrating as well. Uh, loads of loose rock and... Yeah, it's every step you have to t you have to test, which uh, doesn't sound too bad when you're watching this at home. But when you're here, you're not sure of any foot placement and worried about rocks falling down the chute. <laughs> it's a bit of a nightmare. Anyway, I'm not too far from the top. I'm spinning around. See the top of the great stone chute just behind me there. Then it's a wee skirt up to School Alster, which is right behind me. Fantastic! But the sun's starting to show itself. I don't know if you can see over my shoulder the Impin and Skur Gerard and the rest of the ridge going away. It's lovely. So hopefully this nightmare of an ascent will be uh, <laughs> yeah, will be done soon. Although I do have to come back down this way a fair bit to get over to Skur McConnick. Uh, right, let's get cracked on. Whew. Here's that sort of view. Look at that. Beautiful. Reaching the top of the Great Stone Chute was a relief, I must admit. And uh, see the view you get of the Southern Coulomb at this point is magnificent. Anyway, once at this point you take a right and there's a short scramble up to the top of Skur Alistair. And there's a few narrow sections which you, you have to be, uh, you keep your balance on for sure. And you get your hands in the rock and, and what have you. And after long I was reaching the summit of the highest point in the sky. And also the highest point in the Black Coulomb. And that view you get from Skur Alster, well, it's one that will live long in the memory. Here I am. This is the top of Skur Alistair. What a viewpoint. And this is the highest point on the Coolin Ridge. It's 990 metres, and the views behind me, I'll plan to some shots. You can just see out to sea and over to the mainland. And though it's not blue skies, it's just absolutely it's beautiful. It really isn't. It's not too much of a breeze. I'm just going to get a seat here. Oh, it's lovely. See Blaven over there, and the rest of the north of the ridge over that way. It's it really is stunning. Absolutely a lovely morning it is. And Skur Alistair was named after the, the first ascentist, the first person to come up here. Oh, the name escapes me, I think Alexander Alistair was the chap's name. Uh, it's 992 metres on the top of the Black Coulomb, a spectacular place. Anyway, I'm not going to hang around too long, so I need to drop back down the Great Shoal Stone shoot, uh, Gully. Uh, great Stone Shoot, maybe? <laughs> anyway, and along, and we'll try and find Collie's Ledge, which is just over there, to get to the top of Skur McConnick. But I was going to enjoy it for a wee bit longer. Lovely. And enjoy it I did and I got the camera out and took a took a couple of snaps and yeah the, the light wasn't great but the, the subject and the mountains really make the, the view it's absolutely stunning. I spent a bit of time on top of Skur Alster, which was actually named after Alexander Nicholson, not Alexander Alster as I, I mentioned in the clip there, who made the first ascent in 1873. I just wondered what his thoughts would have been when he when he got there and saw these views. Second to none, and what a rough, wild and rugged place this is. So 
After soaking in the morning dawn views from Scoot Alistair, it was time to head back down the same way I'd come up and I, yeah, I was getting a bit perky at this point so I stopped and put my jacket on to, to warm up before continuing down the ridge which takes you back to the top of the Great Stone Shoot. Yeah, it's still a bit airy on the way back so more, <laughs> more balancing required. Anyway, back at the top of the Great Stone Shoot and I decided to head over to Skur McConnick, but uh, not over the, the, the peak Skur Thierich. I thought I'd head down the, the stone chute to find my way over towards Collie's Ledge. Yeah, and there's that scree again. An absolute nightmare. <laughs> <sighs> well, coming down the Great Stone Shoot, just up there, I've had to drop down a fair bit to uh, get across to the second one. No, it's not too bad coming down, but these poles <laughs> definitely came in handy. Because the scree, a lot of the scree, I think in the ba back in the uh, the first or the early days, this would have been a great scree run. But because there's been so many foot, f yeah, the footfall up and down here has just pushed all the proper nice small stones to the bottom. So that was all big scree, which is a bit, uh, you have to be a bit more careful there, you don't want to twist your ankle. Anyway, we'll see how the hand stack screes are on the way, <laughs> on the way down off the second one row. But yeah, I'm coming up off the path here, and I need to do a bit of route finding to try and find the stop. The stop find the start of Collie's Ledge and I've got great memories of uh, Collie's Ledge from when we did the Traverse a few years ago but I'll talk about that later on. Now I need to uh, concentrate on where I'm going and try and find the uh, try and find the start of the ledge. Right, let's get going. So coming off the Great Stone shoot, it was time to put the poles away because I knew there was some scrambling coming up and uh, it's easier to have the poles in the bag at this point. And I was headed for Bielach McConnick which sits between the the uh, Skur Thierich and Skur McConnick and it's at this point you have to try and find the uh, the start of Collie's Ledge and getting up to the, the Bielach McConnick yeah, there is some uh, grade 2 scramble, scrambling required and a bit of route finding but I was glad when I found it and once you're at that point in good weather you can see the, the well worn rock it goes round to the right where all the yeah all the climbers in the past have gone round and at this point there's a wee high step uh, it's not too difficult and you pull yourself up and in a minute you'll see the start of Collie's Ledge. I do apologise for all the head <laughs> head cam footage which is coming up, but I thought it was uh, it was the easiest way to kind of uh, film Collie's Ledge. I didn't want to fart about too much with the camera, as they say. Anyway, that was me on the start of Collie's Ledge and making my way along it. And what an amazing place this is! Uh, I've been on it once before, and I remember uh, I remember it from then. And the ledge is no more than, oh, I don't know, in, in some places it's, it's maybe up to a metre wide, but the majority of it is a lot less than that. And in, in some places there's actually gaps in the ledge uh, where you need to step over and you can see that big gaping drop between your feet. And you do have to be, <laughs> yeah, you do have to be careful. You can see there it's, uh, it's quite exposed. The, the head cam that I'm using does have a kind of fisheye effect on it, so it does make it look worse. It worse than than what it was, but what an amazing an amazing place it is! And you can see here just Scoot Alistair behind me and the black cooling, and it's just one of those places. It's it's got to be on the majority of uh, mountaineers and walkers, uh, you know, wish list. I would have thought. Anyway, I'll stop talking now and just let you enjoy the ledge as uh, as I saw it from my head cam. Easy scrambling. There's one or two sections where you you have to get your hands on the rock and what have you. And the only other way up to Scour McConnick really is via King's Chimney, which is a V diff uh, rock climb, and I, I wasn't doing that solo today for sure. Anyway, I was soon approaching the end end of the ledge, which goes on for a fair bit, and is uh, yeah, is the highlight of the day. It was superb. Wow. So this is uh, coming towards the end of what they call Collie's Ledge. And it's, uh, I don't know if it's basalt, but the uh, the rock 
dike that infuses the gabbro, the harder rock here, basically wore away. The weathering happened a bit quicker than the other stuff. That's why you've got the ledge here. And there's various of these dikes that run through the the cooling, and you've got to watch out for them because the gabbro is nice and sticky. But you also get these uh, basalt sections which are really sl slippery when wet. <laughs> you've got to watch out, and I think it's just something to do with the way when the, the mountains were formed. The magma cooled at different rates. Don't <laughs> don't quote me on that. Anyway, Collie's Ledge. I've always known it as Collie's Ledge, but just recently, I, in fact, when I was coming here, I was researching that some people are calling it Hart's Ledge. I'm just going to come up so you can see me. Yeah, some people are calling it Hart's Ledge because Norman Collie actually came. He was it was the second ascent of this he did, and there was a chap called Henry Hart, an Irishman, who came along here. But I must, I must say, the man, there was, a, there was a guide, the first ever mountain guide in the UK was a crofter from Sky called John McKenzie. And he took them both up here. So I'm pretty sure it probably was John McKenzie that knew about this ledge and it should be called McKenzie's Ledge. However, I don't think he'd be too bothered now because there's, a, there's, a wee, there's another wee uh, name, shall we say, round about here, which we'll get to later, that might relate to Mr McKenzie. And uh, yeah, but I remember this, uh, the Collie's Ledge, I've got a picture, I'll maybe put it up on the screen now from when I did the traverse uh, of the, the, the whole ridge many moons ago, maybe 12 or 30 years ago. And that picture just, it's just a great picture of the two of my friends ahead of me sort of skirting around the edge of the, the, the ledge. And I can remember looking down and thinking, God, that's exposed. Um, I was a bit more with it today, I do a bit more mountaineering now, so moving my head for heights is a bit better. So anyway, enough talking. I need to get up to Skur McConnick now, and apparently that's quite airy, a nice airy ridge as well, so I'm going to crack on up there and, uh, yeah, taking the views. Let's go. Ah. So at the end of Collie's Ledge, you kind of cut back on yourself and scramble up onto this almost knife-edged ridge which takes you along towards Skur McConnick. And it really is fantastic. It's, it's really airy ridge walking at its best. And before long, I was approaching the summit of Monroe Number 2. Ooh, well this is an area ridge up to Monroe number two, Skur McConnick. And uh, I'll just come round this way so you can see me. What, what a lovely exposed place this is. And I was saying earlier on when I was coming along Collie's Ridge, Collie's Ledge, sorry, or Hart's, Hart's uh, Ledge, that there was more to John McKenzie, although I think the ledge probably should have been named after him as well. He shouldn't be too disappointed because this mountain, Skur McConnick, is actually named after him. It's the the peak of Mackenzie. So John Mackenzie had a peak in the cool and named after him, which I think is great. The, the first of our guide and what have you. So this is probably a lot of people say out, out with the inpin, which is just over my shoulder. This is one of the the walkers uh, peaks that they don't like the exposure. It's just it's pretty easy scrambling, grade one, grade two coming up there. And it's just lovely. What a what a lovely place to be. And behind me I can see Skur Alistair where I've come from and down to the southern end of the ridge and it's still the the clarity's great so I dropped down into uh, I dropped down into the Great Stone Chute. Um, I think the last time we did this, I did the ridge about 15, no, maybe 12 years ago. And I don't think we dropped down the chute. I think we stayed on the main crest of the ridge. But I, I think that there's a bit of uh, grade three or moderate climbing. I just didn't fancy doing that without anybody with me and what have you. So I thought I'd drop down, and I really wanted to come along Collie's Ledge as well. And I'm glad that I did. And the sun's coming out rain queue, so I'm gonna get a bite to eat here. Then head back down here, down the and stack screes. Right, something to eat. After a third breakfast, I sat on the top of Skur McConnick and just soaked in the views. This was another fantastic viewpoint. I wasn't going anywhere fast. After half an hour on the top of this magnificent peak, I had to start thinking about heading back down and the adventure wasn't over yet, I had to head back down the, the ridge of Skur McConnick towards the Anstack screes and this involved quite a bit of scrambling actually, it wasn't too difficult but 
certainly uh, I knew about the scrambling between Collie's Ledge and the, the summit but beyond that there's still a bit of scrambling to get you down to the the top or the flat section uh, which marks the start of the Anstack screes. And on a day to day like today, it was just fabulous. The majority of the rock in that gabbro was, yeah, it's a, a rock climber's and a, and a scrambler's delight. It's really, it's really quite grippy and sticky. And then once again, the the helmet cam here maybe makes it look a lot steeper than it is, but it's still not a place to to fall. I mean, one one slip or trip coming down here, then it's going to be a very uh, it has a very, very serious, serious consequences. Anyway, I was making my way along. There was nice wee gaps looking over to Blaven. Was, the sun was coming out. It was, yeah, it was delightful. It was just really, really nice. And it was only, it was still only about nine, nine thirty at this point, and the ridge was relatively quiet. I could, I could see some climbers coming up the Anstack screes, uh, heading, heading this way, and also a lot of them heading over towards the Inpen. And it's not. Uh, it's not all easy going. There's a few steep sections where concentration's required and a head for height and and what have you. But yeah, before long I was reaching that flat section and it was time just to just to take a wee breather here before getting the poles out and ready for that steep descent down the screes, which is exactly what I did. Get the poles out for this descent. Boy. After my bar of Snickers and my weed rest, the, the, yeah, the adventure wasn't over yet. I still had to negotiate and I'd really concentrate going down those skis. I think it'd be quite easy to twist an ankle going down them. And yeah, I wasn't going to relax fully until I'd got down to the, the base of Coyer Lagging and into the weed lock in there. From there, I knew there was a good path all the way back. Yeah, and I got there. Pretty safe and sound, I stopped and took my helmet off and, and got the old cap back on and yeah, it was, it was sad to be leaving the, uh, the cooling behind me there and I was headed back to the car down, uh, down in Glen Brittle where I'd left it and it turned into a lovely afternoon and I just enjoyed the walk back. What a wonderful, wonderful day and you know what, it was only going to be a couple more days till I returned to the Black Cooling for yet another, possibly even better adventure.